Welcome to Electro Online. The part that is often confusing when we're trying to factor trinomials in this format, x squared plus bx plus c, is to know what the sign should be of the numbers we're looking for. Hmm. So there's four possibilities. Here, one, two, three, four. Notice the first possibility is when they're all positives, and that's the one that we covered on the previous video. Then the second possibility is that the middle term is negative and the third term is positive. In either case, notice that the third term is positive, so when we multiply two numbers together and get a positive result, that means that both numbers must either be positive or they must be negative. So that's case one and case two. When the third term is positive, both numbers we're looking for either must be positive or negative. What determines which way it is, is the middle term. If the middle term is positive, then both numbers must be positive. If the middle term is negative, then both numbers must be negative. That's how you decide. But then we have the other two cases where the third term is negative. Well, when we multiply two numbers together and we get a negative result, that means one number must be positive and one number must be negative. So that's what this says. One must be positive and one must be negative in both of these cases. Now what determines which one is positive and which one is negative, when the middle term is positive, then the positive number is the bigger of the two, and if the middle term is negative, then the negative number is the bigger of the two. Of course, a negative number is never bigger than a positive number, but you understand what I'm saying is you get a bigger quantity there, except with a negative sign in front of it. All right, now let's go ahead and apply what we've just learned. So in the first case, we realize that both must be positive or both must be negative, but since the middle term is positive, they're both positive. We use the same technique again. We write x and x. So now we decided both are positive, which means we can put the two plus signs in. Now to get 15, the only way to get there is to multiply 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. When we add them together, we should get 8. So the only possibility is 3 and 5. So that's what we'll put down. 3 and 5. Okay, that was the easy one. How about the next one? Again, we start out by multiplying that or writing the two binomials. We have an x and an x, but now notice either both are positive or both are negative, but since we have a negative middle term, that means both must be negative, so I need to draw two negative signs. So now I'm looking for two numbers. When I multiply, I get 12. When I add them together, I get a negative 7. They both have to be negative. So that means I get a negative 1 multiplied times a negative 12. I can have a negative 2 multiplied times a negative 6. And I can have a negative, let's see, 3 multiplied times a negative 4. Those are only, only three possibilities. When I add them together, I should get a negative 7. Notice the only two numbers that match that is 3 and 4. Together is 7. 2 and 6 is 8. 1 and 12 is 13. So a negative 3 and a negative 4. Now let's come up here. Again, it's going to be the product of two binomials. I have an x and an x. Now you can see that one must be positive and one must be negative because the last term is a negative one. So I write a positive and a negative. Now I'm looking for two numbers. When I add them, well, when I multiply, I get a negative 12. When I add them, I get a plus 1. So that means that the bigger of the two is positive, and since this is plus 1, that means the bigger one of the two is one more than the smaller one. So again, I can say I have a 1 multiplied times a 12. I can have a 2 multiplied times a 6, and I can have a 3 multiplied times a 4. Now, one of those must be positive and one of those must be negative, and the positive one must be the bigger of the two. When I add them together, I get plus one, which means that the positive one must be one bigger than the negative one. Only the four is one bigger than three, six is much bigger than two, 12 is much bigger than one, so these are the only possibilities. So it would be a plus four and a minus three, because this is one more than three, and when I add them together, plus four, negative three, I get a positive one. So a plus 4 and a negative 3 will do the trick. And finally, my last example, notice that, again, one must be positive, one must be negative, and when I add them together, I get a negative 7, which means that the bigger one is the negative number. So I can get 1 multiplied times 8. I have 2 multiplied times 4. 
And those are the only two possibilities. There's no other possibilities to get eight. Notice one must be positive, one must be negative, and the bigger of the two is negative. And notice that the negative must be seven more than the positive. So these are too close together. This is sufficiently apart. The difference between these two is seven. So if I make this a negative eight and a plus one, I multiply them together, I get negative eight. I add them together, I get negative seven. And so there's the solution. So I end up with an x and an x. I end up with a positive and a negative. The positive must be one, the negative must be eight. And that's the factored form of that trinomial. So you can see when you have a trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus c, we have to recognize by looking at the last term, the third term, whether or not all the signs are positive, all the signs are negative, or one is positive and one is negative. Once you determine that, then again you go to the same procedure like we did before. You're looking for two numbers. When you multiply them together, you get the, ter the third term. When you add them together, you get the second term. And that's really the way to go about it. That's how it's done.